Good evening. Welcome to the July 21st, 2014 Troy City Council meeting. We are pleased this evening to have Mayor Pro Tem Henderson give the invocation this evening. So if you would stand for that, please, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance afterwards. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful summer day that we've had today. Uh, we pray that you'll be with this council as we uh, go over the decisions that you've placed in front of us. Uh, we pray that you'll give us uh, the guidance and the, the knowledge to uh, make appropriate decisions. In your name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Troy City Council meeting is now called to order. The roll call, Ms. Bittner. Mayor Slater. Here. Councilmember Campbell. Here. Councilmember Fleming. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson. Here. Councilmember Hoderick. Here. Councilmember Pennington. Here. Councilmember Teets. Here. All present. Our first order of business this evening is certificates of recognition and special presentations. Our first presentation is C1, Safe Built Scholarship Presentation with an introduction by Paul Featherston, Safe Built Building Official, and Cindy Stewart, Community Affairs Director. Good evening. Good evening. Good Please evening. speak into the microphone. We didn't know that. <laughs> Um, Safe Build's core values of service, teamwork, improvement, integrity, and respect are very evident based on their performance around the city of Troy. They ha their involvement in the annual scholarship program, this is the third year, shows that they're committed to the um, communities that they serve. And this year, we're pleased to announce that Asan Ali and Arushi Mahajan, they are our recipients this year. Asan graduated cum laude from the International Academy, where he was a member of the National Honor Society as well as the Math and Spanish Honor Society. This fall, he will attend the University of Michigan to study economics and finance. <laughs> he was a member of the high school's varsity basketball team, DECA as a board member, and student leadership at the IA. He took part in the Turkish Study Abroad Program, the Muslim Student Association, Project Sticker Shock as a volunteer with the Troy Community Coalition, and he was a volunteer with Troy Youth Assistance. He also worked as an unpaid intern for the City of Troy and for Oakland University as an economics research assistant. Um, Arushi, she's going to be a senior at Troy High in the fall, and she has a career GPA of over 4.0. She's a member of the Troy Library's Teen Advisory Board, Science Olympiad Team, National Honor Society, Wayne State Medical School Research Assistant and a hospital volunteer at Children's Hospital of Michigan. Um, seven years participated in Science Olympiad. She has won four state level awards and numerous regional medals. For the last four years, she has served as president of our Teen Advisory Board, TAB. While serving on the board, they have been recognized as a vital teen voice in the community through the many successful events they have hosted for teens. And she's going to tell you a little bit about that at the next presentation. Um, her consistent kindness and welcoming nature have created an environment of inclusiveness. And under her guidance, the Teen Advisory Board has grown from a group of eight students to over 40 local teens from three high schools and two middle schools. So I'd like to give the mic over to Paul. Thank you very much. On behalf of Safe Belt and also in partnership with the City of Troy, we'd like to present you with this check Thank for you. scholarship for $500. Thank you. Thank you very much. You did a great job. <laughs> also to you, sir, again, on behalf of Safe Belt in partnership with the City of Troy, we'd like to present you with this check for $1,000. Outstanding you job. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know if Arushi wants to stay up here or not, but uh, our next <laughs> presentation is the Teen Advisory Board presentation by Arushi Mahajan, Board President. 
with an introduction by Kathy Russ, the library director. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm so thrilled to be here. Arushi is a very busy young lady, as you've heard, and we are absolutely thrilled to have her as president of the Teen Advisory Board at the Troy Library. She has done a lot of wonderful things to revitalize that board and, and do great things for the library, and um, she requested time tonight to tell you about them. So take it away, Arushi. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, respected mayor and esteemed council members. My name is Arushi Mahajan, and I am currently the president of the Teen Advisory Board, or TAB, at the Troy Public Library. I will be a senior at Troy High this fall. First, I wanted to thank each and every member of City Council for providing me with this opportunity to speak. It is truly an honor for me today to act as a conduit for TAB, and by extension, the voices of the teens of Troy. One year ago, I spoke to advocate for TAB, which at that time was in its infancy. What we lacked in members, we compensated for with our relentless motivation to succeed and our unfettered enthusiasm. Today, I am proud to say that our membership has grown from eight members to 40 members, a 500% growth. TAB has always had ready access to many motivated teens, and I quickly realized the untapped potential of our group. I surveyed TAB members, and it was immediately apparent that the teens desired more volunteering opportunities within our community. That led me to create Project Received, Accepted, and Delivered, or Project RAD. Project RAD is a completely teen-based initiative of micro-volunteering. On our website, we created a separate page for Project RAD, which allows local organizations and businesses who need volunteers to contact us. This is the Received, or the R, in Project RAD. In the email, the organizations need to specify the number of volunteers needed, the location, and the volunteers' responsibilities. The request is accepted, or the A in Project Red, and then offered to TAB members. Because our group is so large and enthusiastic, I can assure the council and every organization that every request will be fulfilled. This is the delivered, or the D in Project Red. The volunteers will be able to earn volunteer hours that are validated by Ms. Olson. Ms. Olson is a librarian at the Troy Public Library. She is our advisor, and to me, most importantly, she is our biggest supporter. Project RAD is only a couple of months old, but we have already been contacted by Troy Military Moms and multiple times by tr the Troy Nature Center. The relationships we are establishing are mutually beneficial because reliable and eager volunteers efficaciously fill the needs of the community. RAD, by means of TAB, has grown to allow adolescents access to a plethora of volunteering opportunities. We as teens strive to help create a robust infrastructure of adolescents that our community can depend upon. And so we hope that our initiative of micro-volunteering in our community can affect people on a macro level. Today, as my role as president of TAB, I'm here to seek advice. I want Project RAD, TAB, and indeed the teens of Troy to be more relevant. We have formed a group that wants to serve our community, and now we want more opportunities to do so. So with your support, we aspire to become an instrument of change for a more positive image of the teens of Troy. I hope that in the future, all local organizations will be interconnected with the community by means of Project RAD, a means of change and a conduit of service. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Arushi. You, you are a credit to our city, and thank you for everything that you've done for us. Um, your parents must be very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. I wish we all could speak like that. <laughs> there are no carryover items this evening or public hearings. No one has signed up for public comment for items on the agenda from Troy residents and businesses. So we will move to regular business as there are no postponed items either. First order of business is I-1. There are no mayoral appointments and I will turn the Microphone over to Mayor Pro Tem Henderson for a City Council appointment recommendation. I'd like to uh, move the names uh, Gary Hoff and David Bloom uh, for the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, terms expiring 731-2015. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Henderson and supported by Councilman Fleming that we appoint 
Gary Hoff and David Bloom to the Parks and Recreation Board for the terms to expire 7-31-2015. Discussion. The vote, Ms. Bittner. Mayor Slater? Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Motion passes. I too is uh, board and committee nominations. We are going to pass on this item this evening and move. There are no closed session requests this evening, so we move to I4, which is a contract ratification, Troy Fire Staff Officers Association, to be introduced by Jeanette Menning, the Human Resources Director. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'm so pleased to be here to present the tentative agreement that we reached with the Troy Fire Staff Officers Association, or as we call it, TFSOA. It is uh, certainly consistent with the other agreements that we've recently ratified. And one notable uh, item that I'd like you to uh, take note of is that it is a five-year agreement and it'll be expiring in 2019. City management certainly supports and uh, recommends ratification. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions from council? Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Someone like to move the resolution? Mayor Pro Tem Henderson. Mayor, I'd like to move I-4 contract ratification for Troy Fire Staff Association, Officers Association, uh, as printed. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Henderson, supported by Councilman Fleming, that we approve I-4 as written in the agenda. Discussion. Congratulations to staff for, for bringing this forward. Uh, it's always nice to see these on the table. The vote, Ms. Bittner. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Mayor Slater? Yes. Motion passes. I-5 is the Joint Local Development Finance Authority proposed extension, LDFA, with an introduction by Mark Miller, the Director of Economic and Communi Community Development, and Glenn Lapin. Economic Development Specialist. Good evening, guys. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, Glenn is here to help me out in case I make any mistakes. <laughs> so has anyone driven along Big Beaver out by Bellingham and been stuck in traffic? <laughs> For the lane closures, those are your LDFA dollars at work. <laughs> we um, allocated about $106,000 from the LDFA for roads, 80000 for Big Beaver, and then about 26000 for Bellingham, because if you've ever driven on Bellingham, that's in pretty bad shape. So I'm here to give a, a report where we're at today, but I'm going to give a little history lesson. Back in 2002, 2003, um, the city of Troy and the city of Southfield entered into um, agreements to create it's a smart zone in, for Automation Alley. Now, this was very unique because the smart zones are limited, so we had to create a joint LDFA and then a subcommittee for Troy. And it was the only way that we could have um, a smart zone for our own. That was originally a 15-year plan, we, which will expire in 2018, and it's the provides support for Automation Alley, and we have provided support for funds for the building and also infrastructure improvements in the area. So what does Automation Alley do? And I'm going to quickly go through a list because they do a lot. They're a, techn a technology business association. They're a business accelerator. They are, have a mission to grow the economy in southeast Michigan. Eight counties are members. They foster entrepreneurship, foreign investment, importing, and technology-driven businesses and they also develop high technology jobs through uh, education and developing that talent. Last December, the legislature adopted new, new legislation that allows for smart zones to be extended. And there are two different categories, a five-year and a 15-year extension. The five-year is relatively simple. Um, we just have to agree to some 
extra reporting requirements and say that we'll do regional collaboration. And ultimately, Automation Alley is the best regional collaborator that there is. So in essence, we're doing that and we'll support it. We did submit to the MEDC an executive summary and that was accepted for the five year. City of Southfield is on board with that because anything that happens has to be also approved by the City of Southfield. And there is a joint LDFA board that hasn't met since 2002 that would have to be resurrected. So the, there is a deadline of March 31st of 2015 for the TIF and development plan to be um, approved by all of the bodies. That would mean our LDFA, the joint LDFA, the city of Troy and Southfield's councils would have to approve it. And that's, that development plan is very similar to what we did with the DDA. That type, it's that type of plan. It's a development plan and a TIF plan together. So the 15 year, um, extension is much more difficult, but for us it's very important. It will give us a long-term tool to help Automation Alley grow and stay in the city of Troy. And I'm going to list off some of the requirements of this because it is rather stringent. First, um, we, we want to do this because it will enhance our smart zone for the long term and keep Automation Alley in Troy. We need to find, with Southfield, because we're doing this jointly, we're working with them now, a satellite smart zone. It's a requirement that one be developed somewhere and we have to have regional collaboration with that smart zone. We are in discussions with some communities and the difficult part is that re that satellite smart zone has to have a minimum of $200,000 real budget. So you have to have an organization which is actually up and going. So then this relationship has to have unique characteristics and we have to explain what those characteristics are. And that's really related to uh, um, regional cooperation and collaboration in the economic development world. We need to, 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 to really explain that in our executive summary which is due uh, at the end of September. And once again, the, if, if, excuse me, there's a bug flying here. If, um, if MEDC accepts that executive summary, we then would have until um, June 30th of 2015 to get the development plan and TIF plan prepared and approved by both communities. With that, I just would like to say that the, the importance of keeping Automation Alley and Troy is, is crucial and that's why we're going after this 15 year um, extension with, with the satellite smart zone. Um, Glenn, do you have anything we need to add? Yeah, just to add that um, regardless, because these are concurrent processes, so we can apply for the five year at the same time we apply for the 15 year. Um, and either way, we'll be working very closely with our local development finance authorities, both in Troy and in Southfield. Uh, all, both local governments would have to approve of this. Uh, and in a satellite for a 15 year extension, the third, that community as well would have to approve it. So it has several tiers of approval to go through uh, in order to move forward. But the goal really is to um, help sustain this LDFA over time, help make sure that Automation Alley grows. Uh, it's a tremendous asset for the city of Troy and uh, we believe uh, we're, it's a good partnership that we've had with Automation Alley all along. So we're gonna continue to try and help and, uh, and make sure that they can grow. Great. Thank you for the update. Any questions from council? Councilman Campbell. On the, uh, the satellite organization, you're looking for a city who's not involved with a automation alley in their area now, is somebody that's totally devoid of that? To I failed to mention something. There is some language in the act which says it has to be another distinct reg um, regional area. Well, at first we took that we could go to anybody. And actually we were trying to partner with another Oakland County um, city, but the MEDC then indicated no, it has to be outside of Oakland County. So I don't want to talk too much about with the community we're, we're, we're talking with right now, but what's important is that we develop this regional collaboration which is actually a positive for both Automation Alley and, and um, the other new area that we're going in and that be complementary and have some synergies. And it will become really apparent if that this would occur when we can divulge who we're talking with. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson. You mentioned Southfield. Has Southfield approved this uh, for their uh, 
program as well, or are they kind of in the same process? They're on board with us. In fact, on Friday, Brian, myself, and Glenn met with their new city administrator and their economic development person with Ken Rogers to talk about this. We're, we're all on board and moving forward. They, they have a very, um, they have a smart zone with an LDFA that generates considerably more money than ours. They, need, they have some vacant land and an empty Blue Cross building. So they um, really are, need to move forward. If, just to understand what they did, you know the American Drive exit? That, that was built with LDFA funds. Okay. And that's where their smart zone is right there. Any other questions? Thank you for the update. Uh, I agree that um, keeping Automation Alley headquarters in Troy is um, very important um, to our city, for sure. Thanks for the work on that. You're Thank welcome. You. Next is the consent agenda. Is there anyone on council that wishes to pull a consent agenda item this evening? Would you like to move uh, the resolution then? Councilman Fleming. Sure. Resolve that Troy City Council hereby approves all items on the consent agenda as presented. Second. Moved by Councilman Fleming and supported by Councilman Campbell that we approve all items on the consent agenda as presented in the agenda this evening. Discussion? The vote, Ms. Bittner. Councilmember Fleming. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Hoderick. Yes. Councilmember Pennington. Yes. Councilmember Teets. Yes. Mayor Slater. Yes. Councilmember Campbell. Yes. Motion passes. If you are here on a consent agenda item this evening, they have all been approved. Next is memorandums and future council agenda items. K1A is an announcement of a public hearing, August 11th, 2014 which is an Industrial Development District IDD and Industrial Facilities Exemption Certificate, IFEC, for Mahindra NA Technical Center at 1055 West Square Lake Road. Anyone wish to speak on this item this evening? Next, our public comment for items not on the agenda from Troy residents and businesses. I don't see that anyone has signed up this evening. So we will move to council referrals. M1 is a council referral from Councilman Teach, and I will turn the podium over to you, sir, uh, for introduction. Gotcha. Um, last week, at the, pardon me, last uh, meeting we met, and I told uh, the folks, or that uh, we're going to introduce a resolution about the, the backwater testing that the state is mandating the, the city of Troy implement and is affecting uh, citizens on the west side of the city as that implementation process is going on. And almost immediately someone called me and said, well, you know what, we should also have a resolution about the income tax. Another person said the Middle East. And I thought, holy cow. And then somebody told me about wolf hunting. I said, hold on. This isn't going to be Pandora's box here of of uh, politics uh, 101. So I really thought about this, and there I think are three criteria why this is relevant. Uh, first, it's relevant to this body because this is a mandate that's been placed on the city itself, and the city has to implement this. We've had to readjust uh, staff assignments and so forth, and frankly, it's unfunded. It's a burden on our tax dollars. Uh, additionally, there's no consideration for the practical implementation of this. Uh, you know, a city the size of ours, very difficult to do. The second thing is, you know, is this something that's timely? Indeed it is. I'll read the, the resolution in just a moment. But there's a bill currently that is in the state Senate through the committee process, after going through the committee process in the, the state uh, House of Representatives. And uh, this is something that's very timely for what's going on in Lansing and telling our legislators how we feel as a, as a community. And then uh, finally, does this have any impact? Unlike the, a resolution about the Middle East wolf hunting or the federal income tax, I think we can have an impact here by just making our voice heard. And the only other time that we've ever done something like this was with the fireworks, and that was a couple years ago. So I certainly don't want uh, this to become a habit or, or something that we do too often. But I think this is, is very relevant. So I'm going to read this just briefly. I know we can all read up here, but for the folks in the audience tonight, Whereas on May 22, 2014, the Michigan House of Representatives passed HB 513, 
amendment to the Safe Water Drinking Act, and 5318, amendment to the Still Dorset Hale Single State Co Construction Code Act, which were tie barred, and whereas on May 27, 2014, HB 5317 and 5318 were referred to the Senate Regulatory Reform Committee and are pending at this time. And then going on, whereas upon the current law mandates that the ME, MDEQ residents and businesses of the city of Troy are now required to pay the cost of, for a licensed plumber to complete backflow testing once every three years. And these costs can be up to $150 per test. And whereas the city of Troy acknowledges the critical need to prevent contamination of the water supply, and recognize the backflow testing is an important responsibility of every uh, homeowner and strongly encourages education about the protections provided with backflow testing. And whereas the M MDEQ uh, requirement to complete backflow testing every three years is not, is an unfunded mandate and is not clearly set forth in the state statute. And the MDEQ has demonstrated that has not demonstrated that this backflow testing frequency is required to prevent contamination of the water supply. Almost done. And whereas the unfunded mandate on local municipalities deserve, diverts tax dollars away from core city services and testing every 10 years as detailed in HB 5317 may provide the same protections to the water supply. Therefore, uh, be it resolved, the City Council and the City of Troy hereby recommends the immediate passage of HB 5317 and 5318 and urges the Governor to immediately sign it upon presentation and be it further resolved that the City Clerk shall forward copies of this resolution of the state to State Senator John Papa George, State Representative Martin Harlack, as well as Governor Snyder and be it further resolved that the City urges Troy residents to learn about this issue and contact their legislators to express their opinion. So there you have it in a nutshell. This is an opportunity for us to, to tell the state to, to back off. And, uh, and frankly, the arguments for every three-year testing are, are few and far between. Uh, it, this passed through the state house in a bipartisan vote, including our uh, state representative, Martin Harlack, supported this bill to, to, to tell the state to back off and, and test every 10 years. With that said, we'll open for discussion. Yes. Are you moving the resolution? Indeed, as I just read it. Okay. Support. Support. Okay. Resolution regarding HB 5317 and HB 5318 has been moved by Councilman Teach and supported by Mayor Pro Tem Henderson. As printed and read. Discussion. Okay, let's have the vote. Mayor Pro Tem Henderson? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Mayor Slater? Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Next we have council comments. Are there any comments from council this evening? Mayor. Councilwoman Hoderick. I wanted to take a second and um, just speak to um, a fun item that happened in Troy last week. We had a resident that turned 104, um, a beautiful woman named Rosaria. She goes by the name Sarah. Um, born in 1910, married in 1928, was truly a Rosie the Riveter um, through World War II. And it's um, uh, a time to reflect. She was, her family talked about um, the quality of life she enjoyed here. And it made me pause and reflect. And I guess sometimes as council members, we get to go out and into the community and see these things um, that not everybody else gets to see. There was some media coverage. And um, I just wanted to share for a second the fact that a family and a whole community at Oakland Towers celebrated this woman and her life and the quality of it. And it was a very positive moment in one little corner of the city of Troy. Thank you. That is one of the good things we get to do on council. Any other council comments? Next is reports. Does anyone on council wish to have a comment on any of the reports on the agenda this evening? 
Okay, next we will do comments on items on or not on the agenda from members of the public outside of Troy. And I will call on Jeff Blysides, is that close? To speak on M1. Good evening. Good evening. Is that close? Felicities. Felicities? Oh, okay. It's Greek. They like to play with the language. Well, <laughs> now that you, now I can see that. Yeah. Good evening. I hope you understand our rules. We have three minute time limit. Um, and uh, please begin. Hi. Um, thank you very much for letting me speak. Uh, my name is Jeff Felicities. I am the president of Michigan Backflow Prevention Association. I'm the president of the Michigan chapter of American Backflow Prevention Association. I own backflow prevention uh, services. I also own test gauge and backflow prevention supply. I've been a master plumber since uh, 99. I've been testing backflow preventer since 88. Um, when, we, when we say that there's no um, uh, argument for three-year testing, let me put it this way. Well, the Michigan Plumbing Code supports one-year testing. USC, Foundation for Cross-Connection Control, uh, that's University of Southern California, um, they support one-year testing. The DEQ supports three-year testing. Um, we have everything from, if I may, I don't know if you're allowed to use uh, books and such. Um, I have some support for my claims. The Cross-Connection Control Manual, uh, supports and points to one-year testing. They allow you to pick whatever you want uh, in your individual uh, cities. We understand it's not one world out there, it's different cities. Uh, the uh, USC uh, Manual of Cross-Connection Control cites in here uh, that one-year testing is what we should be striving for. Um, I could read it to you, but I can also talk to anyone that wants to after that. There, that's in that one. ASSC's cross-connection and control professional qualification standard. This has been flippantly re referred to by some people as the let's make the plumbers rich. This has been on the books since 1974. This has been developed from 10 years to five years to three years. Okay, the reason we don't have as many incidents as we used to is because we test them, okay? <clears throat> AWWA, American Water Works Association, they point to one year testing. Uh, NFPA doesn't apply, that's for fire suppression. Cross-connection controls manual, I'm sure you've read this. Michigan Plumbing Code. My company, we did a survey of how many uh, tests we did in the residential since they started. One of my testers did, let me pull it so I don't get the numbers wrong, and I'll end on that one, uh, almost. <laughs> uh, 81 tested, 46 passed, 35 failed. There's a reason to test these. Okay, and to the $150 tests, I have a receipt and an invoice. We charge $75 a test, not $150. I don't know who does that. They're encouraged to search out different people to give them quotes. Nobody told them $150, and thank you very much for your guys' patience and consideration. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Perfect timing. And. You know, not to get into this discussion, but many of us up here have a problem with unfunded mandates that come out of Lansing. Not so much that it's needed at one year or three year or 10, 10. It's the burden that's put on the local municipalities that are unfunded. Oh, I understand. May I? Thank you. No. That's, oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, next uh, person that signed up to speak is Mike Lukey. Uh, Mike Luke. I'm sorry, Mike Luke. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm also here to talk about um, that resolution. And uh, seeing that I only have three minutes, I do have some information here if you would like me to leave it. Uh, this is about actual cross-connection incidents from lawn irrigation systems. You can leave that with the uh, city clerk and she can get it to us. Thank okay. you. Um, we're talking about the safety of drinking water and the safety of the citizens that consume that drinking water. There's one incident where, and it, it's from a newspaper in here, where citizens um, contracted Campylobacter. And the article says that's potentially fatal for people with compromised immune systems. 
One of the other incidences in here occurred in Southgate, Michigan. Somebody was running a bath for their child and noticed that there were worms swimming around in the water. And that was caused by a water main break and irrigation water was siphoned right into the bathtub. There's another incident in here. Hepatitis A, the Holy Cross football team lost a full season because um, fighting fire dropped the pressure in the water main. Hepatitis was sucked in through a puddle and a sprinkler head. So this is about protect, protecting drinking water and citizens. I also have in here um, a manufacturer's recommendation for annual testing. And I've got evidence the city of Clare um, explained to their citizens a year ago why you should do annual testing. Uh, White Lake, uh, the Charter Township, a union up near Mount Pleasant, it's nationwide. There's Austin, Texas, and Lincoln, Nebraska. So I am also, I'm president of the Backflow Prevention Manufacturers Association, and I'm working with the Senate Regulatory Reform Committee and the House Regulatory Reform Committee. And Mike McCready, who sponsored the original bill for three years testing, they're already starting to work on reducing the amendment from 10 years lower with the Senate. So I would urge uh, the City Council to reconsider and to take a leadership role in protecting drinking water and the citizens that consume that water. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to, you could leave those with the, the clerk and she can get them to us. Thank you. Next item of business is the study items. Uh, we had a study session this evening before this council meeting. There is no closed session this evening, so we are adjourned. Thank you for coming this evening.